Welcome back to Las Vegas. Lisa Martin here with Dave Vellante. We are covering day two of our coverage of Snowflake Summit 22. It's been a canon of content coming your way the last couple of days. We love talking with customers, with partners. We've got a partner on the program from ThoughtSpot. We're going to be diving into digital transformation with self-service analytics for the modern data stack. Please welcome Kuntal Vahalia, SVP of Channel and Alliances at ThoughtSpot. Welcome, Kuntal. Thank you, Lisa. Dave, thank you for having us. See ya. Talk to the audience a little bit about ThoughtSpot, give them an overview, and then dive into the partnership with Snowflake. Yeah, absolutely. So ThoughtSpot is the what we call live analytics for the modern data stack. Right? We want to be the experience layer for all the data that's getting modernized and moving into the cloud. Right? And then specifically to Snowflake, uh, we of course, we have seen over the last two days here, Snowflake has made tremendous innovations where they've accelerated a customer's journey into the cloud, uh, especially the data cloud. Uh, our job is to go really unlock that data, right? generate that value, make it consumable at the, at the experience level, layer, right? So what we want to do here with Snowflake is make analytics self-service for the end users on top of the Snowflake data cloud, right? And we want to empower everyone to create, consume, and operationalize data-driven insights. We think if the end users can generate their own insights through live analytics, we could do, have a completely different operating model for a business, right? And I think we can do that in an accelerated fashion on sitting on top of uh, Snowflake data cloud. End users, lines of business. It's line of business users, so we directly go to end users. That's one of our differentiation. Uh, not just IT, but as well end users as well. So we could be all things to all enterprise uh, across all line of businesses. So what kind of impact are you seeing with your customers? You know, ones that are leaning in to ThoughtSpot and Snowflake and sort of rethinking their data approach. Yeah, I mean, I think the impact could be immense, right? As I said, this is not just about analytics. If we are successful in empowering end users, it completely changes the velocity of the business. We are now driving innovation at every node, at every layer in the organization, not just IT, not just smaller segments in the organization. We are doing this anywhere, in any pocket, right? So I think the impact could be massive uh, if we do this right. And I think we're starting to see that. We have a lot of customers here actually, joint customers, Capital One, Canadian Tires, uh, Walmart, they're all joint customers where we are seen, starting to see some of those impacts where we have uh, data getting modernized, the stack being ready, and then we coming in at the top as the experience layer, which is driving that new di digital operating model. Describe the maturity curve when you go, you mentioned some of the, the, the leaders, I mean, take a Walmart, I mean, they kind of invented the whole, you know, beer and diapers thing, right? right? So, <laughs> obviously, a company with tremendous resources and, and, and advanced technology. Compare sort of the, some of those leaders with sort of the other end of the spectrum. When you come into a company and you see, okay, is, what does that spectrum look like? And, and what's the upside for the, I don't want to call them laggards, but I'll call them laggards. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's, I think we're still early on. I mean, as this is not just a exercise in getting the data ready, this is also an exercise in, uh, in change management. Because now, as I said, we're going beyond IT. We are going to line of business users as well. So a lot of change management required. And we have seen companies uh, that are actually putting this in front of the frontline workers, empowering frontline workers to consume analytics and to drive self-service via search and AI, uh, they are on a different curve. They are actually being competitive in the market. That's an advantage for them, right? Right. So we are seeing a lot of companies like Walmart already ahead in that journey with us. Uh, still early days, right? We got to go land in one line of business, go from there to other line of business till we go enterprise-wide. Can you, it sounds like you might be a facilitator of connecting heads of business with the IT and the tech folks, that uh, thought spot. Absolutely, I mean, that is the holy grail. How do we get IT and line of business work frictionless, where everyone has their roles defined, right? And still get to the outcome where innovation is happening now with IT on the data cloud, and then go beyond IT into the broader business. So yeah, I think that's definitely one of the out goals and outcomes of what we do. So what are the roles there? So the business obviously wants to do more business. Okay? They yeah. put analytics in their hands and it helps them get there. What role does IT play? Making sure that it, those services are available? Are they a service provider? Is it more of a governance yeah. and compliance thing? Yeah, I mean, step number one is still to get the data ready. And I think IT still owns the key to that kingdom, especially around governance, security. So I think IT still has to get the data stack ready, right? Step number two is for IT to really build a framework for how to consume 
analytics for the end users. Step number three then is, is the rule is, hey, we don't need IT to now deliver dashboards or KPIs to the business every day. That, that's how traditional dashboards work. In our world, once IT does step number one and step number two, the business can take over and they can now go operate the business on their own using live analytics. Creating self-serve. Absolutely, self-service analytics. Using what have you seen AI. in terms of, from the IT folks perspective, we talked about change management a minute ago, it's very challenging to do, but these days every company has to be a data company. Yeah. They don't have a choice. Yeah. What are you seeing from a change management perspective within the IT function across your customers and them be willing to let yeah. go in some cases? Actually, what we have seen is, you know, think about the, the technical debt that IT is owning over the last few years. It's just increasing, right? <laughs> IT is looking for ways to A, cut cost, B, deliver more with probably the same amount of resources they have. So in some ways, they welcome this new operating model. As long as they can keep the governance, they can keep the security, they can keep the framework around how business is run. As long as IT has a say in that, they're more than welcome to invite business to really drive innovation at the edges uh, through self-service analytics. So what we found is uh, IT is a, is a welcome partner in this journey, uh, especially when they have to get the data ready and modernize the data set for us. You guys announced a, a partnership with uh, Matillion this week? What, what, tell us what that's all about. We did, we did. So we did announce a partnership. So I think, as I said, step number one is getting the data ready. And I think we have heard from Frank and rest of this team this week, even Snowflake is taking a best of breed approach on the data stack, right? right. So we want uh, the computer and the storage to be ready, but for that, the data pipeline has to be ready, which is where Matillion comes in with the low code, no code approach. So we think between Matillion, Snowflake, and ThoughtSpot, we could be the accelerated best of breed approach for customers to realize value and, uh, and be live on the, on the modern data is stack. That your, is that your stack? Uh, as we said, we, we meet the customers where they are, but we think this is the accelerated path. For what are the advantages of, you know, what are you optimizing on in that stack? Uh, first, with Matillion, we have what we concept, we have this concept of Spot App. So this is ThoughtSpot's way to really capture the IP and the templates for customers to move fast, right? That's where we bake in a lot of the industry IP, uh, a lot of functional IP around end sources and, and uh, endpoints. So we have some of those Spot Apps built with Matillion. So now, customers are able to ingest uh, data into the, into the cloud faster using Matillion, right? So that's, that's something we have worked with. Uh, same thing with Snowflake. You know, we are now starting to go uh, verticalize with Snowflake. So we're starting to build a lot of IP around financial services, healthcare and whatnot, uh, which is where I think we are again accelerating customer's path on the modern data stack all the way to the experience layer. As a partner of Snowflakes, what does all the narrative around the data cloud, we've been talking about that for a while, a lot of conversation around the data cloud the last couple of days, where do partners fit into that overall narrative? Yeah, I think multiple places, right? First thing, every layer of the data cloud still needs innovation, still need partners. And every partner adds a different set of value, just like we add value at the, at the top layer, which is the experience layer. Uh, but I think, you know, we have channel partners, we have a lot of SIs and GSIs here, uh, especially once we take a best of breed approach uh, to delivering customer outcomes, SIs are the neutral ground. They are yeah. the ones who are going to have the Matillion expertise and the Snowflake expertise and ThoughtSpot expertise all baked into one DNA practice, data analytics practice. So I think at every layer, partners have a role to play, uh, and every layer, partners have, role, uh, have value to add. What's the engagement process like for customers when you, you're talking about the, 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 the three-way partnership, Matillion, uh, ThoughtSpot, and stuff like, how do customers get involved? What's your go-to-market look like? Right, uh, I mean, obviously, I mean, we, we, we are humble, we know where we are. I mean, we are uh, a little bit smaller than, than Snowflake. Snowflake has a head start, so they've been about five years ahead of us. So we are largely targeting customers that are, that are Snowflake ready where there is some semblance of data cloud, where data is, seems to be organized and ready to go, right? So once we think the customer is at that point in the journey, uh, we have very strong partnership across, both, across the entire organization, at a product level, at a field engagement level, and our field teams really understand the value, uh, the joint value between the two organizations. So we, we start to see Snowflake field and ThoughtSpot field starting to work together on key accounts once we think the data is ready. And wherever we need to accelerate the data, that's where we bring in Matillion as well, 
to ingest more data into, into the data cloud. But that's largely been the engagement model uh, between the three companies. How do you see the announcements that they made uh, around applications affecting what you guys are doing and your ecosystem? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a validation. I think to us, we always said, step number one is to modernize the data, move it to the cloud, that's step number one. But we still have to unlock the data. Like, the data still needs to be consumed. And we always said, hey, we are that app that could drive the consumption of data. But now with some of the announcement we have seen, I think the validation is there, saying, hey, yes, they, even Snowflake is ready to move in a more accelerated fashion into the application world, where they want to drive consumption, not just with the analytics layer, but with a lot of other applications that's out there. Yeah. What are some of the things that you've heard this week in the last couple of days that really validate the, the partnership with Snowflake from your perspective? Yeah, I mean, I think the first thing is, is this concept of modern data stack, which is best of breed. I think we have been thinking about that for a long time, uh, for the last year or so. We have seen this uh, come through at this event here, right? We see Matili and Snowflake, and then the SIs around it all coming together. So I think to us, that's the biggest validation that the modern data stack is the right approach, especially best of breed, to drive the right customer outcomes. So to me, that's big. Uh, second is this concept of really accelerating applications on top of the data cloud. I think that's again a validation of uh, what we've been trying to do over the last uh, few years, which is the data is modernized, let's now drive consumption and adoption of that data. So I think those are the two big takeaways. So, so the modern data stack, to get to the modern data stack, you got to do some work, Yep. right? But so the, the play is to hold out the carrot, which you kind of just did, because once you get there, then you can really start to hit the steep part of the S-curve, right? That's right. What, what are the, what would you say are the sort of prerequisites that customers need to think about to really jump on that modern data stack curve? Um, I think they, they got to first have a vision around the outcomes, what outcomes we are driving. I think it's one thing to say, hey, we're just going to move the data over from, from legacy into the cloud. I mean, that's just, that's just migration. That doesn't drive the outcomes. To us, what makes sense is, let's start with the right outcomes around supply chain, around retail, around e-commerce. Let's name it, right? I think it starts there. From there on, let's figure out what do we need, what, st what, what technologies do we need in the stack? to enable those outcomes, right? It could be ThoughtSpot at the top, it could be something else at the top, and same thing, it's Matillion and Snowflake, right? But it really starts with what outcomes we're going to drive in what industry and what KPIs are important for our customers. What's next for ThoughtSpot and Snowflake? I was just looking at the notes here. Over 250 plus joint customers, you mentioned some, Disney Plus, Capital One, I've seen them around here. What's next for these two powerhouses? Uh, well, I think we're just getting started, uh, to be honest. I mean, those 250 customers, uh, first, we got to go drive success for them. I mean, we are a 10-year-old company with a two-year runway because we transferred our business, transformed our business to cloud less than two years ago. So this 250 joint logos are actually all happened in the last two years. And that's driven us to be in the, probably in the top five adoption drivers for Snowflake, all in the last two years. So goal number one is to really, let's go drive customer success for these joint logos. Second, let's go expand them, right? Consumption is the key. Uh, criteria both for Snowflake as well as ThoughtSpot. We are very well aligned, our pricing models align there, our incentives align there. We really want customers to go adopt and consume the stack. And then of course, really, we want to go verticalize ourselves, start speaking the language of the customers, and uh, really just get bigger. I mean, we still got to build a machine around this. Yep. Lisa, this is, this is all still early days for us. Early innings, a lot of, but a ton of potential. The, the field is ripe. Phil is wide open. I think you know, we were, I think, bottom of the third, or bottom of the second. I think uh, we still have a long game to play. Oh, right. good. Most people s you always use bottom of the first. I'm glad to hear it's really bottom of the second or third. That's pretty good. Yeah, well, well 250 logos along. are there. Yeah. You know, and it's further along because of the, the, I don't want to say it like this, but I'm going to say it anyway, the, the failure of the big data movement. It pushed us along quite, quite a ways in terms of thinking, putting data at the core. The technology kind of failed us, you know, and the, and the, um, the centralization of the architectures it failed us, but then the cloud came along. That's right. We learned a lot, and now you know, technology's advanced, I think people's thinking is advanced, and they realize increasingly the importance of data. Yeah. So. And ecosystem is coming. I mean, I think you look yeah. around here, this is the secret sauce for the future. Yep. Right? This is what's going to really get us moving faster over the next few innings, because now the rest of the ecosystem is coming along. Yep, the yep. momentum is here, that flywheel is moving. 
That's right. Definitely. Kuntal, thank you very much for joining Dave and me on the program. Uh, Lisa, about Dave, thank you so much for your time. What ThoughtSpot's all about, what you're up to, a lot of momentum. We wish you the best of luck as you progress into those later innings. Thank you. For Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. If you're watching theCUBE, we are live in Las Vegas at Snowflake Summit 22. Dave and I are going to be right back with our next guest, so stick around.